Few industries have been as impacted by the coronavirus as the grocery business. When lockdowns began, grocery stores transformed themselves physically to respond to safety concerns. At the same time, demand skyrocketed, pushing food retail sales to record highs and in many cases remaking entire supply chains. I've been in this business since I was a child. COVID-19 was something we've never seen before. Everybody has been affected, and I think the industry will be remade in the future as a result. The pandemic has triggered a boom in online shopping. Instacart, the nation's biggest independent grocery delivery service, reported that its order volumes are up as much as 500% year over year. So what happens next? What will be the lasting legacy of COVID-19 for the food retail industry and its workers? Simply put, how will we shop in the near future? Plastic shields, masks, social distancing markers. If you've visited a grocery store any time in the past few months, you've almost certainly encountered these new cosmetic changes. But what about consumer behavior? Are we shopping differently? Yeah, there we go. Okay, there, there I am. To find out, I spoke with Bill Bishop, a veteran industry analyst. Consumers are, uh, first of all, going to the store less frequently. They are rushing through the shopping experience more quickly than normal. Browsing is not fashionable. During the pandemic, people definitely started buying different things. Kelvin Rodriguez operates an independent family-run grocery store, Billy's Marketplace, in Ridgewood, Queens. Number one was paper, paper products, a lot of non-perishables, and they were buying more bulk. Before the pandemic, local independent stores like Billy's Marketplace made up only about 11% of all grocery sales. Most Americans shop at the nation's biggest chains like Walmart, Amazon Whole Foods, or Kroger. The retail grocery business is a huge business made up of many competitors, which makes it a hyper-competitive, very low-margin business. Before the pandemic, grocery stores in the inner city, I would say were struggling a bit, right? There was a lot of competition. There was a lot of big box stores coming into New York. To cater to the tastes of his mostly millennial customers, Rodriguez set up a beer bar and a coffee shop in the store. We wanted to create an experience, and that's where we thought this industry was headed. We wanted to create where you could almost get everything in one. We know everyone that's walking in through that door, and we have a relationship with our customers. But with New York still on partial lockdown, those offerings are simply not possible because of safety regulations. Fortunately, late last year, Rodriguez had the foresight to jump on the biggest trend in food retail, e-commerce. Usually we don't know the difference between an Instacart shopper and a regular shopper. With such low margins, it's impractical for smaller operations to create their own delivery services. Instead, if independent stores like Billy's want to sell online, they have to look to third-party companies like Shopify or Instacart. Previous to pandemic, it was about 1%, which you would say 1% is pretty small. After the pandemic, it doubled. It went to 2%. Although a 1% increase may not sound like much, in an industry with such low margins, 1% can be the difference between being profitable or simply breaking even. Before the pandemic, online grocery shopping was a small fraction of all grocery shopping. But since then, it has gone mainstream. Well, the largest player in grocery would be uh, Walmart. Walmart has approximately 5,000 U.S. stores, which can be found 10 miles from 90% of the U.S. population. We've been focused in this space for a while now, building up our curbside pickup um, uh, capabilities that are in over 3,300 of our locations as we stand today and, and growing each week. According to Ward, although the trend toward online shopping has existed for a while now, the coronavirus accelerated its adoption. We heard that um, customers felt more comfortable if they didn't have to have a, a personal exchange. All of our curbside interactions now are contactless. In fact, our customers don't even wind their window down. 
and the, the transaction is conducted inside the vehicle, our associates load the trunk on the customer's behalf. More than 38.6 million Americans have filed for unemployment since March, creating a new talent pool for those expanded operations. One area of growth has been in non-traditional gig work. Instacart, for example, relies on gig workers to shop for its customers. But like many industries that rely on gig workers, the sustainability of this delivery model depends heavily on the workers' compensation and whether they are classified as employees. The long-term benefits for retailers with an online presence lies in the data they can collect about their customers. If a retailer has your business online and offline, it gives you a complete picture of the household or a much more complete picture, which is very valuable. The growth of e-commerce has also given rise to dark stores, the name of which can be misleading. Dark stores aren't really stores in a traditional sense because they're not open to customers. They're more like depots that serve primarily as a location for pickup or dispersed delivery. It's particularly important because it's a route to profitability. The cost of picking the order, so we call pick and pack, substantially less than a dark store. Looking further into the future, a sign of things to come could be online-only companies like Okado. Based in the UK, Okado only does home deliveries from its warehouses. Okado is a standalone online service that is generally regarded as the absolute state of the art. If a typical supermarket is 50,000 square feet, an Okado unit is 350,000 square feet, and it reaches tremendous efficiencies. Back in Queens, Rodriguez remains confident that once the pandemic passes, his customers will still want the neighborhood in-store experience that Billy's offers. I'm really trying to get people here. I feel like if everything goes online, what kind of experience are you really gonna have? You gotta get out of the house sometime. So it's almost to make people feel at home. That's really what we wanted to do. Make people feel at home at the store.